is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. All of us have prayed and sometimes felt, God, I don't think my prayers are getting beyond this ceiling. I'm praying, I'm moaning, I'm groaning, I'm doing everything I know to do, and my prayers aren't getting through. Well, my friend has a revelation from God that the devil is a legalist, but he has found the game changer where you win every time. I want him to teach you this revelation. Uh, you know, Robert, I am so excited to release this revelation to our audience throughout the world. Uh, th this is a major game changer for people, but I want to find out a little bit more about you. Your, uh, in, your, your church has got signs and wonders and a tangible cloud comes in. Tell me about that. Yes, uh, I travel now full time, but I mm -hmm. raised up and led this church for 15 years. Um, what happened was one Sunday morning, I'm up preaching and suddenly in a 1500 seat auditorium, Praise I cannot see the back wall Thank you, Lord. because there's Hallelujah. a smoke in the room. I mean, I'm literally physically seeing the smoke and I'm thinking in my head, it's like February in Texas, someone left the door open right. and someone's burning leaves outside and smoke has <laughs> drifted in. I mean, that's what I'm thinking because you don't expect right. to see smoke. And suddenly I realized I didn't smell smoke. And that's whenever I realized this is the glory of God. The glory of God has come into this room. And from that point on, it would come in as a smoke. Uh, it would come in as a cloud, it would come in as a mist, and you could feel it upon your, sometimes when it was like a mist, you could feel it on your skin. Uh, just tremendous things happening as we were just in the presence of the Lord. Now, Robert, you found a legal secret to yes. answer prayer. What yes. is that? I found out that everything is legal in the spirit realm. Uh, that's why, or for instance, when Jesus died on the cross, it's the greatest legal transaction of history. and. When he said it is finished, he meant every legal mandate is now met. That's what he did on the cross. So we take that legal mandate and execute it into place. Uh, in other words, if a, a verdict has no power unless it's executed into place. This is why a judge can render a verdict, but if there's no officer of the court to execute it into place, it doesn't accomplish anything. We are the officer of the court anointed deputized, authorized by the Holy Spirit to take what Jesus did on the cross and, and execute it into place until there is a practical function connected to what he did. You talk about that our big mistake is we try to execute in the battlefield right. rather than the courts of heaven. And you, and you believe that's like a real court. Absolutely. In Daniel 7 and verse 10, the Bible says that the throne of God, and it's describing actually what Daniel saw, John saw, in the book of Revelation, Ezekiel saw, Isaiah saw. Um, it's in, and the Bible calls that the court. It says, and the court was seated and the books were open. And books are full of the destinies of people all the way up to nations. So, so what is in the books, it takes courtroom activity to get it into reality in the earth. Every person in this room and on the planet has a book in heaven according to Psalms 139, 16. We have to know how to step into the courts of heaven and deal with every legal thing the enemy is using to stop us from getting the destiny God ordained for so, us. So can the devil who, who goes after those little 
foxes, if you will, yes. those legal things. If he has that, that can literally block your prayers being answered, yes. your, your healing, uh, your financial provision, uh, your peace, Absolutely. your family being coming into the kingdom. This is important stuff. Absolutely. When Jesus, Jesus put prayer in three dimensions, in Luke 11 and Luke 18, he talked of approaching God as Father, approaching God as friend, but then approaching God as judge. And so, and that's the judicial dimension. We, we understand going before God as Father and his friend, but we don't really know a whole lot about coming before him as judge into the judicial systems of heaven. Because whenever he talked about the unjust judge, he was obviously not saying God is an unjust judge. His point was, if this widow could get a verdict from an unjust judge, how much more can we come before God, the judge of all the earth, the righteous judge, and see okay. God render verdicts in our behalf? When you say we go before the court of heaven, do you really mean that's where we go? Yes, the Bible says we're seated together with Him in heavenly places. And then when you read Hebrews chapter 12, it says we have come to uh, Zion, the city of the living God. And then it talks about the judge, the mediator of the new covenant, the blood that speaks better things, the, the spirits of just men. Those are all voices that are in the courts of heaven that are speaking, that we come into an agreement with. So when the Bible says we are seated together with Him, Hebrews 12, 23 through 24 actually explains somewhat what we have come to in that place of being seated. And that from that position, we have tremendous authority to present our petitions, which are legal issues, before the courts of heaven and see God render verdicts to have them done in the earth. See, when I come into the courts of heaven, well, I, I put it this way. Everything is naked and open with the one with whom we have to do, it says in Hebrews 4. But the point is, is that when I cannot fake the spirit realm out. The spirit realm knows all things. I mean, the demons knew who had authority and who didn't have authority. And so we have to come in in a realm of holiness, repenting, but, but actually understanding that, that the grace of God doesn't give us license to sin, it empowers us to live above sin so that we can take our rightful position in the courts of heaven and see God's will done. Now that's a big difference. That was a mouthful. I hope you heard what he said. But this is an idea that God uh, ha, ha, wants exposed right now for what is about ready to happen on planet Earth. It's not the worst time of planet that's Earth. Right. It's the best time of Amen. planet Earth. Amen. And that's why God wants you to understand this revelation. I'm supposed to be a detective in the supernatural. I'm, I'm curious. I want to find out. When we come back, I want to find out how God showed you this revelation and how the first time you used it, what happened? Uh, would you like to find that out? We'll be right back, okay? <laughs> we'll be right back to It's Supernatural. If you love watching our It's Supernatural TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. We now return to It's Supernatural. Uh, Robert, when we're trying to advance the kingdom of heaven, when we're trying to do what the destiny God has put in, on our life, why is there such a backlash? What allows it even? There's two things that allow backlash. Because re realizing everything is legal in the spirit realm. See, the devil cannot do what he wants to do. Just do it. He, uh, in, in 1 Peter 5, 8, the Bible says he is the, the, the devil, our adversary, who goes about like a roaring, seeking whom he may devour. He can't just devour at will. The word adversary is the Greek word antidikos, which means one who brings a lawsuit. Hmm. That's what the word means. Interesting. Okay, and, and it comes from two words, anti and dikos. Anti means against, dikos means rights. So the purpose of the lawsuit is to deny us what is rightfully ours. See, people, uh, people wonder, why am I not getting what the Bible says I'm supposed to have? 
everything Jesus bought for me is because the devil has a case against us in the courts of heaven. And, if, and so when we rush to battle and, and, and don't understand I have to go to the courtroom first to get legal things in place, when I rush to battle before I deal with the legal issues that the enemy is using to resist me with, he's going to backlash against us. He has a legal right to. Okay, uh, let's talk about the first time you went to the court of heaven. And by the way, you were talking about the unjust judge, uh, and you were telling me the interesting thing is the woman didn't go to the devil, she went to the judge. That's Explain right. Explain that. When you read, see, see, it, first of all, when you, when you study Jesus' teaching on prayer, he never pictured prayer on a battlefield. That shocks people. He, we, we are so taught it's on a battlefield. He never puts prayer on a battlefield, but he d did put it in a courtroom. Because that, there, we're in a conflict, but there's a difference between the conflict of a battlefield and the conflict of a courtroom. So when the widow went before the unjust judge, she never addressed her adversary. She didn't yell, scream, bind, loose. She didn't do any of that. She actually asked the judge for a verdict that would render her adversary, her anti deco same word there, to, that would render him unable legally to operate against her. And once that is in place, now we have the right to stand up and rebuke him and he will have to flee. It's really what James 4 said. Re submit yourself to God, resist, then resist the devil, he'll flee. So we get the order wrong. That's right. Um, oh, okay, you, you talked about something that we could talk the whole show about, and that's because most people aren't even aware of it. The books that have our entire life in heaven. It, and it, it's not just for the people that are household words that you know, see on, their names are on television. It's for everyone. Right. There are books, every one of us, which has our destiny in it. And that's what we're contending for. That, that's exactly right. Uh, Psalms 139, 16 says, all my substance yet unformed. I believe that's our DNA. It's what makes me who I am. My interests, my gifts, my likes, my dislikes, we all have different ones. God made us different. And then he says, and my days yet unfashioned. So before I ever lived any of them, it says they were written in a book in heaven. And so the devil is trying to uh, detour us from that destiny. That's right. God wants us to fulfill that destiny, and it's all found out legally by going to the court of heaven. That's right. That's right. Can I tell just one, one quick thing? Uh, Luke twenty two thirty one. 31. This, this will blow us away. It says, it says that Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift mm -hmm. you as sweet. We know that. The word desired there, he demanded you be put on trial. So Satan had an awareness of what Peter's destiny was, and his strategy to stop him from getting what was in his book was to take him to court and say he's disqualified because of these issues in his life, but Jesus said, I went to court for you, I've stood for you, and you're gonna get the destiny God ordained for you. In other words, Jesus is our advocate. Yes, yes. Okay, your son. Yes. You had a serious problem with your son, and this is where you first understood the whole going to the courtroom of heaven rather than fighting in the battlefield, having it settled, before they fight. That's, That's right. wonderful. Yes, yes. So, so tell me step by step how this happened. Well, what, what happened was my son Adam uh, went through a very, very serious place in his life. Well, he, he went through a divorce is what he went through. It devastated him. His wife decided she didn't want to be married, be in the ministry, anything. So for two years, he was in depression and I couldn't get him out. I tried to encourage him. I tried to uh, speak uh, vision into him, everything. He just felt like he was worthless, useless. And that's not Adam by personality. He's a very upbeat person. No, Dad, it's over. My life is over. God's not there for me. What happened was I bound, I loosed, I cried, I whispered, I shouted, I yelled. I did everything I knew to do in prayer. One day, I just started seeing this about the courts of heaven. I went to prayer and the Lord said to me, bring Adam to my courts. I heard him as clear as a bell. So I'll tell you what, hold that thought. What you're about to understand works in every arena of your life. And because my guest is a teacher, a God-ordained teacher. 
He makes it so clear, line upon line. It's not complex. It's so clear that you need the devil to get confused. (laughs) We're going to get it totally clear when we come back. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Have you ever prayed for a miracle, a healing, or a breakthrough for a long time? Binding and loosing, shouting out scriptures, yelling at the devil with no results. What is the problem? Or better yet, what is the solution? Robert Henderson received a revelation from the Lord concerning the courts of heaven that uncovers the way to have your prayers answered every time and quickly. Now, Robert wants to share these supernatural keys with you. Call now and get Robert Henderson's breakthrough book and anointed four-part audio CD teaching operating in the courts of heaven. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9368. This teaching series on operating in the courts of heaven is an absolute game changer and will totally change your relationship with God, your prayers being answered, and accomplishing your destiny. Now, I'm not using these words loosely. This is a game changer. Through Robert Henderson's book and four-part audio CD teaching series, you will understand the importance of directing your prayers towards the courtrooms of heaven instead of on the battlefield where the enemy is engaging you in warfare. Learn that Jesus resides in the courts of heaven as your advocate, your attorney before the righteous judge. Be taught on how to deal once and for all with the past transgressions from your generational line, which is impeding the flow of blessings and answers to your prayers. Understand how to access God's heavenly books and see your destiny begin to be fulfilled. Learn how to deal with the enemy of your soul, the accuser of the brethren, every time you experience his attacks. Begin to receive and act upon the power and authority granted to you in the courts of heaven. Learn how to hear the voices of angels in the court of heaven. Understand how to present your case in the courts of heaven and the power of issuing powerful decrees. Get a hold of the keys to access the courts of heaven and operate in it and watch the miraculous power and favor of God begin to flow into your life and the lives of others. It's time to have your prayers answered. Get Robert Henderson's breakthrough book and anointed four-part audio CD teaching, Operating in the Courts of Heaven. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9368. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9368 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. So he says, a father, you must have been devastated because your son was in such deep depression and you, everything you knew, it wasn't working until you heard a, a word from heaven. And I was watching my son give up on what he had been made for. And he knew he'd been made for because he felt he, everything he had, or he had failed. So the Lord said, bring him to my courts. And I had began to understand a little bit, just enough to start. And so I began to repent for Adam because he was in no, rep- no, no place to deal with this. I repented. See, I, say, I tell people intercessors do for others what they can't do for themselves until they can. And but you also needed authority to do it. I was his, his father. father. You did. That's right. And so that's exactly right. And so I began to repent for him. And I repented for any failures he had as a father, as a husband. I repented for him believing the lie of the enemy. I repented anything I felt, anything I understood, anything I thought, anything I imagined. I repented of it. It took me about five minutes. And then I heard the Lord say something really powerful and significant. He said, now you repent of the things you have said negatively about him to, to his mother, my wife. He said, because the accuser is taking your words and saying even his own father says this about him. Now, I never said anything to Adam, but I had said some things to his mother. I don't understand why he did this, did this. I don't understand why he won't stand up. I don't understand why he won't shake free from this. And I had just spoke negative things. And, and that was binding him. And that was binding him. My words were being used by the accuser <laughs> because as his father, the accuser could take my words and say, his father said, this is the testimony of his father concerning him. And so I repented of those. Now I'm repenting with tears. As soon as I got that done, it took about five minutes, the Lord said to me, now I want you to prophesy his destiny. Adam is nowhere. 
And so I started off. I said, Lord, I declare according to your word how beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of those that bring good news. Adam will carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. He will walk upon the high places. And then suddenly the Spirit of the Lord said, now rebuke the spirit of depression. You see, what I didn't realize I had done, I had dealt with every legal thing so that now I could righteously and legally attack the devil. Hmm. So, so then I said, Satan, I rebuke you. And I still remember, I said, according to Ephesians chapter 5, I say, awake thou that sleeps and Christ will give you light. I rebuke you, you spirit of depression. And I command you to leave my son now in Jesus' name. It took about 15 minutes to do that after two years of praying. And I got up and I thought, that was really different. <laughs> One and a half weeks later, my phone rings and I look and it says, Adam. And I punch it and I say, hey, yeah. Adam. He said, hey, Dad, hey, Dad. verbatim. Can, I talk, Can I talk to you? And I said, sure. sure. And he I said, happened, I don't know what ago, happened. But a week and a half ago, left. suddenly all the depression left. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> and I am now ready oh, to do God's will. Adam is now pastoring his own church as a senior full-time pastor, taking a church and has probably seen at least 300% growth in the last nine months. Just the gift of God working through him, having tremendous success, but it's all traced back to, uh, being, uh, to, de to dealing in the courts of heaven. And this is what I tell people. What I had not been able to do in two years on the battlefield, I accomplished in 15 minutes in the courtroom. You can do something better than anyone else. It's all written in the book. And some of you have missed your destiny and some of you have lost your destiny. But as long as you are alive, you can achieve that destiny and you're not going to lose a step. Would you, I don't, can you pray for people that say, I think I've lost my destiny? Absolutely. Would Absolutely. you pray for them right Absolutely. now? Absolutely. So, so Lord, even as we just are here, we, we just want to thank you that you're our father, you're our friend, but you're also judge. And we just want to come before the courts of heaven by faith, and we want to ask, Lord, that verdicts would be rendered. You created each person with a book, with a destiny from heaven. Lord, I want to ask that every legal issue that's being used against any person, any family line, uh, that, that, Lord, that legal issue would be removed. So what I want you to do is just say this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, in Jesus' name. I repent. I repent. For any sin. For any sin. Transgression. Transgression. Or iniquity. Or iniquity. I claim Colossians 2.14. Anything against me. Anything against me. Any accusation. Any accusation. Anything that's contrary to me. Anything is contrary. You to took me. it out of the way. You took it out of the way. And nailed it to your cross. And nailed it to your cross. Lord, that accusation is removed. Lord, that accusation. By is the removed. blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. And Lord, we grant you as judge. And Lord, we grant you the as judge. legal right. The legal to right. To render a verdict. To render a verdict. That I can have the destiny. That I can have the that destiny. That was written in the books about me. That was written about in me. Jesus name. In Jesus' Amen. name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. You've been wondering for a long time why your prayers haven't been getting through. You've been wondering for a long time why there's this blockage. It's about ready to be removed. You are about ready to walk into your destiny. And what a great time. We're coming into the greatest move of God's spirit yes. in the history of mankind. And God created you to enter this move. He wants you free. He wants you whole. He wants you sold out to him. He wants you to make him Lord. Say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. Be my Lord. Have you ever prayed for a miracle, a healing, or a breakthrough for a long time? Binding and loosing, shouting out scriptures, yelling at the devil with no results. What is the problem? Or better yet, what is the solution? I had hit a wall where we weren't having anything uh, being accomplished in the spirit realm. We had prayers that weren't being answered. It was like the 
enemy was winning on every front. And I was praying and I was working and I was trying everything I knew to do. Robert Henderson received a revelation from the Lord concerning the courts of heaven that uncovers the way to have your prayers answered every time and quickly. Now Robert wants to share these supernatural keys with you. Call now and get Robert Henderson's breakthrough book and anointed four-part audio CD teaching operating in the courts of heaven. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9368. This teaching series on operating in the courts of heaven is an absolute game changer and will totally change your relationship with God, your prayers being answered, and accomplishing your destiny. Now, I, I, I'm not using these words loosely. I'm telling you that this is a game changer. Through Robert Henderson's book and four-part audio CD teaching series, you will understand the importance of directing your prayers towards the courtrooms of heaven instead of on the battlefield where the enemy is engaging you in warfare. Learn that Jesus resides in the courts of heaven as your advocate, your attorney, before the righteous judge. Be taught on how to deal once and for all with the past transgressions from your generational line, which is impeding the flow of blessings and answers to your prayers. Understand how to access God's heavenly books and see your destiny begin to be fulfilled. Learn how to deal with the enemy of your soul, the accuser of the brethren. Every time you experience his attacks, begin to receive and act upon the power and authority granted to you in the courts of heaven. Learn how to hear the voices of angels in the court of heaven. Understand how to present your case in the courts of heaven and the power of issuing powerful decrees. You see, the devil is a legalist. And if you don't understand the ground that the devil has to stop and prevent your prayers, uh, your prayers aren't going to get above the ceiling. I wish every congregation in the world would teach this. It's done in such depth that there's no room for you to misunderstand, and you will find a total difference in your prayer life you will find a total difference in your relationship with God. You will find that all those promises in God's Word do work when you're approaching God legally in the courts of heaven. Get a hold of the keys to access the courts of heaven and operate in it and watch the miraculous power and favor of God begin to flow into your life and the lives of others. It's time to have your prayers answered. Get Robert Henderson's breakthrough book and anointed four-part audio CD teaching operating in the courts of heaven. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9368. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 3. 39222 Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9368 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural, my guest died at age 21, went to heaven, had downloaded into his spirit information that he would need the rest of his life and he's starting to reveal this information involving the end times, science, and the supernatural all coming together, and it reads like the books of Revelation. Yeah. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide.